Hey y'all, welcome to Homemade Simple. I'm Lori, I'm really glad you're here today. Today I thought we would have a different kind of video and I would take you sort of behind the scenes on what it takes to get a homestead ready for a vacation. This video was made several weeks ago and my family and I were going on a trip to a youth camp that our children attend and that we volunteer at. So we were having to get everything ready, our animals prepared. The good news is that Camden, our middle daughter, was going to stay behind and take care of all of the animals. And so I was trying to get things ready for her so she didn't have to do a lot of extra running around and as well do all of the normal mom getting everybody ready to go kind of things. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I am really glad you're here. On Monday morning, I sat down and I tried to think of all of the things that I needed to remember to do and to take, to pack. I, I tried to be very organized. Unfortunately, the best laid plans don't always help in every situation. So I tried to have everything mapped out so that I wouldn't be stressed by the end of the week, but unfortunately it didn't really work out that way. I normally make bread twice a week, but this week I had also signed up for taking bread for our community meals at the campground, and so I wanted to get a good start on that. So I went ahead and started making the bread on Monday. The good thing about homemade bread is you can pop it in the freezer and it stays fresh and moist. All you have to do is take out the baked loaves and let them thaw and they are as fresh as homemade, just not quite as warm. So I went ahead and got that done on Monday so I could mark that off of the list and then I began to pack. I wasn't responsible for packing the older kids but I had to pack my clothes and Chris's clothes and Lane's clothes as well as all of our towels and sheets, all of the things that you need when you're camping in a tent. I had to make sure that I didn't forget anything. That was why the list was so important. I'm certainly not the most skilled or organized packer in the world, but I just wanted to get everything into the bags and ready to go. To try to save money, I've started cutting Lane's hair, and while I'm not quite as proficient as a professional, it worked out okay in the end. Me and Lane are headed to get some hay. We are going to get enough to make sure that we have plenty while we're gone and Camden is taking care of the animals so she doesn't have to go on a hay or feed run while she's here by herself. The biggest thing about being a newbie and getting hay on your own is I never know if it's going to fall out of the truck. So I did the best I could. Hopefully there will be no casualties on the way home. I'll let you know when I get there. 
We made it without losing anything, and I want everybody to notice my highly skilled rope tying skills right there because I found the rope in the truck and I thought, well, I'll try to tie the rope around the hay so that it doesn't fall out. Man, I I miss my calling. I could be I could be a rope tying specialist. But I guess I'll just use my skills here as an un, a hay unloading specialist. Getting hay is a lot like shopping at Aldi. If you've ever shopped at Aldi, you know that you have to touch each grocery item about five or six times before it finally gets into your pantry. Put it in the buggy, take it out of the buggy, put it back in the buggy, take it out of the buggy, put it in your car, take it out of your car, put it in your pantry. Well, getting hay is a lot like that. You drive to get the hay, you put it in the truck and then you tie it down so it doesn't fall out of the truck and then you get home, throw it out of the truck and load it into the trailer. Okay, <clears throat> well that's done. I gotta go get a second shower um, and a lot of water. It's really hot today. Next on the list is to clean this horrendously messy car. We have a really bad habit of just jumping out of the car when we get home and leaving all of the mess inside. And so our car is perpetually messy. I don't really like to take the time to clean and vacuum the car very often, but I was so happy with how clean the car was and it made me realize that a clean car really makes a big difference in your trip. Right before the trip I found Lane a shirt that said so cool like dad and so I thought it would be really cute for him and Chris to have matching shirts. So I bought a plain shirt from Amazon and I made Chris one on the cricket that said so cool like lane they were really cute matching at camp and that was a fun project for a little bit of a break from all of the animal work and packing that I had to do throughout the week There's always animal work to do around here, but before I left, I wanted to make sure that Hazel's paddock was clean. I had moved her up here closer to the house to make it easier for Camden to be able to milk her. And so I went ahead and mucked that paddock before I milked for the day. I have to milk every single day, of course, and so I did that and then put the milk away. Then it was time for me to clean this concrete bench. Chris's mom passed away last year and this bench was bought to take to her graveside. We weren't able to go to the decoration day because that was the day we were leaving for our trip. So Chris and I took the bench and placed it there ahead of time so that it would be ready to have the flowers placed around it. For some reason, I just love to watch time-lapse videos of things being cleaned. It just is such a encouraging thing when you start with something dirty and you can watch it be cleaned so quickly and then the end result is so much nicer than the beginning. put it in the basket.
to put out some compost on my squash and pepper and tomato plants before I left for camp to hopefully give them a boost of nutrients while we were at camp. I'm trying to be a better gardener, but this is something that I'm really struggling with and I'm hoping to get better in the future. It's been a really long time since we've been able to camp in our tent and so we wanted to set it up ahead of time and make sure that everything was okay, that there wasn't any mold or mildew or anything that needed to be repaired and also to let it air out a bit before we packed it up into the car. This really ended up being a sort of disastrous week to tent camp. I ended up getting bronchitis and I was just really sick all week and the temperatures were 95 or better every single day. So we probably, if we had known ahead of time, probably would have made different arrangements. But it's one of those situations where you do the best you can and you make memories in the process of being a little bit miserable. But I was able to recover when I got home, so all is well. And I'm looking forward to our next camping trip, but I'm looking forward to it being in the fall instead of in the middle of the summer. We do this camp every single year, and so we're going to have to find a better plan for overnight than staying in this tent. The week of camp seems to always be one of the very hottest weeks of the year. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do. We'll have to keep planning and thinking about a better alternative, but Chris and I were pretty proud of ourselves with the speed of our tent putting up abilities. It had been a long time since we'd done it, but we figured it out pretty quickly and that was a good thing. It looks a lot better on the inside. It's not, it, it's like, look at that. Yeah. Can you open it for me and just place them here? Kendall and Camden had gotten their wisdom teeth taken out about two weeks before camp, maybe three. And they strategically placed the wisdom teeth extraction so that they would be completely healed and ready for camp. It didn't really work out the way they had planned, and I certainly didn't remember how long it took to recover. But the day before camp, Kendall came to me and said, Mom, I have some really bad pain in my mouth. And I looked, and it looked really bad. And I called the doctor and he said, well, you can come in on Monday morning and I will take care of it. Well, we were already going to be in camp, at camp on Monday morning. So he told me a way that I could try to take care of it ourselves. And so I became doctor mom for a minute and we were able to get a lot of the infection out of her tooth cavity and she was able to just take the antibiotics and recover throughout the week instead of having to make a special trip back down to Birmingham to get her tooth looked at by the dentist. He said 5% of his patients have this happen. Of course, we have to be the upper class. It definitely looks better. That area right there is still swollen. Does it hurt real bad? Mm -hmm. Are you put? Are you like? Did you push on it to try to get it out? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, with that crisis averted, it was time to pack up all of our stuff in the car. We did have a lot of extra things because we were not only leaving for the week, but we also had to have all of our camping supplies. So we packed up our car absolutely to the brim and Kendall's car also was full of their stuff. 
So we had everything loaded down and it was finally time for us to head out. Well, if we're ready or not, we've got all the stuff that we've remembered in the car and now we're off to camp. We're going to worship this morning and then heading to where we're gonna pitch our tent. We're excited, sad to leave one behind, but we know she'll have a good time. <laughs> 